welcome to lecture 28. In this lecture, we are going to discuss the municipal accounts and its reform. In this week, we have been uh, discussing various uh, aspects of municipal finance and possible sources of municipal finance. In this regard, uh, you can uh, arrange many sources of finance, but as long as the finance is maintained uh, properly in the municipalities, you can utilize or you can get maximum benefit of the finance, but if it is not, then you are not going to take the benefit. Therefore, municipal accounting, which is a basically a foundation of keeping all the finances and expenditure everything, uh, that was under question and that was assessed during last two decades. And I told earlier then uh, that in 2000, post 2000, when a uh, paradigm of reform linked urban development came in India, that time municipal accounting reform was one of the major account reform and it came as a mandatory reform. So, today we will just have an uh, overview that what is the accounting system wh which is which was there in the beginning and si few municipalities they are following that also that is a single entry based accounting system and what is the change or the reform expected and what is the benefit and what are the major concerns. So, let us start with the points like today we are going to discuss the municipal accounting system, some of the background, then overview of the double entry accounting system and also we will discuss few salient, salient features of uh, national accounting manuals given by the ministry. So, this also we are going to demonstrate or show basic provisions. So, as a background, I have already told you that in during uh, uh, JNNURM, the accounting reform has been considered as a mandatory reform in the municipalities and it was given uh, preference or the priority in the municipalities by the government of India and the state government. Uh, basic reason was that if it is done in municipality, then uh, the productivity in terms of the uh, financial transparency and the accountability will be more then municipalities will be in a better position to assess their assets and liabilities both expenditures and income both and it will not only bring the transparency at the municipal level, it will bring a transparency at all level and it will give a sound database in terms of accounting matters. So, that is the background and before and following that reform agenda, most of the municipalities now have done that municipal accounting reform. But Initially, when it started in India, there is lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, misconceptions, confusions, and some myths which related to that. So, like some of the myths were like few questions which made people initially very much um, uh, uh, very much not sure about the program, like whether the reform will minimize the job that is whether if the reform is there then whether it will take our job or not that whether whether it needs an additional degree additional degree or skill set that was the question also then whether the ULB needs any special preparation preparation. Then whether the fund requirement requirement and not only that there was like that questions like when we can start. start. So, there are a lot of questions like that, but actual question the actual response or the realities is that that this reform is not going to take away the job of the people who are working in the municipality. Rather, in many municipalities the people uh, they hired specialists and the other people who are working in the accounting system, so that the accounting system can run smoothly and perfectly. Then it the question was like whether uh, it needs an additional degree or skill. 
no it is not required what they did initially government gave some time to time some uh, specialized training or orientation program and then they assess the condition and following that they could perform. Second was whether ULBs need any special preparation that is also no because government uh, notified the guidelines and the task wise checklist of the do's and don'ts so that municipality can perform can deliver those kind of reform. Fund requirement the fund requirement for uh, getting initial uh, softwares, getting initial equipments, computers, everything was given by the, uh, the government and also some amount of the manpower uh, support also was given in some of the states. And when we can start, you can start any time. So, it started during 2004-05 and they started slowly, slowly they took up within 2-3 years. Now, they are uh, going on with this kind of uh, accounting reform. So, so basically the problem. Uh, uh, or the issues which was there associated with the, uh, the single entry system of the accounting is that it is basically cash based. Whatever cash comes or goes out from the system that is what uh, used to be uh, recorded in, in the traditional accounting system in our country. Then the financial statements not finalized over the year and not audited. So, audit, auditing was not there non capitalization of expenditure and uh, incomplete information. So, all the expenditures were that time used to be written in terms of the cash, but the capitalization portion or capitalization dimension of any expenditure was not uh, recorded or the system was not that that somebody can record that particular information. Then asset management and valuation, the municipality sometimes they do not know what is their assets and how to. Uh, make their valuation in the current uh, financial terms and how to record that in their whole accounting system. That kind of practice was absent in municipality. Then poor financial management and information system was there because basically it was by and large based on manual system. Also it was lacking the control procedures for internal activities and internal processes inadequate disclosure and audit mechanism that I already told and because of this there, there was few more issues like you are never able to get a full picture of the assets and the liabilities. Basically the, the cash based systems you are writing either the expenditure or the income, but whatever the assets and liabilities you have in terms of the loan or the debt you are never able to get that uh, idea. Then budgetary control based on payments ignores commitment this type of information was not also possible to write. Then important items not recognized, uh, recognized in the cash based uh, reports like tax billed but not yet received, then debts and loans owned by the municipality, owed by, owed by the municipality, contracts completed, invoices received but not yet paid. So, that means any transaction during the transaction the status of the transaction was never uh, possible to uh, 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 noted in this kind of system. Then difficult to determine surplus or deficit in the earlier system. Then capital expenditures were treated as revenue item for example, road, bridges, drainage etcetera, but which is a capital expenditure you need to invest the capital for uh, creation of this infrastructure. Now, because of that those issues. The, the, the reason was that we have the inadequate infrastructure in the cities, then cities unable to meet rising demand of the services, cities lack financial viability and internal accruals, then empowered by the constitution, but they were not able to perform. Resources available in the capital market and financial institutions, streamlining of financial analysis and accounting as there is poor financial management and transparency and credit worthiness. Now, if you follow this uh, 8, 9 points, you will find that all the points were revolving around the strength of a municipality and the uh, opportunities of the municipality which was not explored so far because municipalities they were not able to see the whole picture of the uh, their assets liabilities and the opportunities to create the new infrastructure. So, that was the reason that uh, to bring the accounting reform so that they can understand in terms of the figures and the facts and the um, accounts that yes how much assets we have how much opportunities we have. 
So, therefore, the reform agenda came to make the cities credit worthy, municipal accounting reform to bring transparency accountability, better financial reporting, disclosure lead to increased confidence in the information, then credit rating and accessing capital markets, then expenditure management costing etcetera. So, therefore, this accounting reform was part of JNURM started with 2004 and then it continued during till this time when we are continuing the Amrut mission. So, this mission linked, so this reform linked like urban agenda, agenda that was kind of a catalytic uh, effect on the accounting reform also. So, the importance of the municipal accounting reform is that inability of the present accounting system, uh, accounting system to provide information to assess the financial performance and position of the ULB. So, when you say financial performance, it is the, the ability to generate revenue, then assets, assets and related to liabilities and rationalize the expenditure. These are the salient points which were there, I mean which was considered for the uh, benefit of the accounting reforms. So, this I have already told the, the, the asset accounts uh, was added, I mean it was possible to uh, take the account of the assets, then income and expenditure account and balance sheet cannot be prepared without the with the current this thing. So, ac current system, the accrual based system permits the preparation of the reliable detailed financial statement which provides appropriate information for decision making. There are some element which is accrual in nature, for example, every year the municipalities they get the inform that the tax from the property tax from the various sources. We have discussed uh, the sources of the revenue from the tax revenue and the non-tax revenue. So, those kind of accrual uh, um, flow of money that was not uh, recorded properly because of the single entry system. In the double entry accounting system, it is possible to see that how your uh, um, the, the flows of the money or flows of the revenues are accrued in your uh, account. So, that was the basic intent of the accounting system. Then, so therefore, after doing this, there are some benefits, you must uh, have a look of the benefits. So, basically, in January agenda, we got the, the decentralization and empowerment after the 74th amendment. So, after this reform agenda, this reform agenda, then government tried to prepare a national municipal accounting man manual. Objective of this manual was to bring a procedural um, coherence, procedural um, uh, informity in the practice, accounting practice of the all the municipalities in the country. But definitely there will be some contextual variations which the state government can do. So, this national municipal accounting manual uh, was uh, mandated to make the budgetary control, financial information was available and uh, this need expressed for a manual, this was expressed by the ULBs and state governments. So, the ultimate objective is the improved local governance. Next, you can see that how the accounting uh, manual will help the uh, improving the good governance. Now, the agenda is the good governance, the objective under the good governance is the accountability, efficiency, transparency. So, accountability basically refers to fulfilling responsibility, because you are not going away from your responsibility. Efficiency refers to your, your uh, ability and quality and transparency 
refers to refers to trustworthiness worthiness of the government government and which is accessed by people right so we uh, discussed earlier accountability and transparency now accounting as a tool accounting as a tool it is helping the accountability because it is giving the account of the assets liability accrual uh, accrued uh, incomes and all those elements and also it is giving additional transparency and efficiency both and with this accounting tool it there is a increase i mean better budgeting procedure financial reporting is better and auditing is possible in a much efficient manner because all the information are there within easy reach in a better platform now better system now so introducing double entry accounting can serve as a platform for wider improvement of the, the system of the accounting and as a whole uh, for the good governance so these are the other benefits revenue is recognized as and when uh, earned costs are matched against the revenue so are so recognized distinction is maintained between the revenue and the capital items you can show the point uh, see the points that you can follow up with receivables and the um, ascertainment of the payables because you are also able to track the the possible payments possible expenditures during the transaction period also and you can also track the surplus or the deficit 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 amount in the account presents a true picture of the financial position so whether in uh, a urban local bodies is having the the strength in terms of the revenue and their rationalization of the expenditure that true picture will give in terms of the assets and the liability and it will give whether the ulb is healthy in terms of the financial matter or not so this will help to give that picture then it also helps uh, a better decision making a leader or a um, executive which is taking day to day decisions in the municipalities they can see the uh, the facts and figures from the accounting system and they can take a decision because this accounting system is accrued it is taking the earlier uh, records and it is taking record not only the expenditure in the cash based system it is taking record for assets liabilities expenditures and income both so again the few more benefits so credit rating will be increased if you can do this because banking institution they will give more credit rating in one lecture we have discussed the uh, the, the credit rating requirement because the bankable projects uh, for the infrastructure development is very much important and for those projects municipality can also take money from the financial institution so financial institutions will give money if municipalities they can earn any credit rating so this accrual based system will enable the credit rating then confidence will be increased also so that they can also uh, mm, uh, get more confidence to do more other jobs so external lending is possible external auditing also possible assist in policy formu formulation tax rates and service charges in the last two lectures we discussed about the conventional and the uh, uh, conventional and the non conventional um, um, financial revenue sources out of that you have seen that tax rates and the service charges those are there so from this accounting system with a transparent way and when it's with a systematic way you can track that what are the major revenues from the tax base and non tax base service charges etc etc accrual based system that we have already told you that it is reliable system and it gives information for decision making transparency accountability i told okay now so far the government of india they have taken some uh, steps like they have taken model municipal law tax free municipal bonds the, they have started some enabling mechanism so that municipality can do that urban reform in terms of incentive fund pool finance i discussed earlier lectures e governance also i that we have discussed so and in the jnnurm they have uh, started the accounting reform as a mandatory and now it is being uh, continuing in amrut also so after that the national accounting uh, municipal accounting annual which i told that they have started that then training manual training manual is important you can understand that uh, being a big country about 5000 uh, uh, municipalities and the urban centers how difficult it could be to give training to each and every uh, urban areas then the valuation committee for fair valuation uh, and uh, transparent valuation that is also possible with this so those kind of training is also uh, given 
then support to state government, uh, then professional association of ministry municipal finance officers, it is also possible. Uh, so, uh, so that financing mechanism in the municipality that, that also was given a formal mechanism so that they also can be recognized for this kind of job. So, let us have some um, screenshots of the accounting manual. So, accounting manu manuals basically uh, they provide the information regarding the, uh, the large and small cities accounting system, double entry of course, we have discussed, then formats for the financial statements, then provision for fund accounting, then budgetary system, then municipal uh, information system, then also it is conservative provides flexibility to states and cities. cities. And now please see the contents, what is the contents of the uh, national uh, municipal accounting manual. Part 1 is basically general, just have a look, I do not need to explain each and everything, uh, part 1 sorry. And in the part 2 you can see the basically it is the details of the how you will uh, maintain your accounts, the type of the uh, sources is uh, given, various sources and for every source how you are going to uh, maintain your accounting that is also given in part 3 uh, basically your procedures are given procedures statements audit report and in the part 4 the budgeting and the MIS report is is given and how to make the balance sheet. So, this is in short the, uh, the provisions of the national uh, municipal accounting uh, manual and in this manual it is mentioned that the all the entries will be either in terms of income expenditure, assets and liabilities and out of every entry there will be major head, minor head and detail heads. So, these are the major structure of the uh, accounting manual which all the municipalities are subject to follow this format. These are the coding logic, I am not going into this details, you can go through the manual and you can understand. So, these are the accruable incomes as per the national uh, accounting manual, you can see. Uh, we have told earlier also property tax, the user charge and the drainage tax, the education, advertisement, profession, um, carriage on the animals, carts, trade license, then license fee under PFA Act, then there are so many actually, so many you can go through and you can relate with your context that how many can be utilized. So, most of them I mean municipalities uh, some of the uh, this, this um, items could be relevant, some of the rele uh, items may not be relevant. So, it is up to you how much you can utilize. Then some accruable incomes are there like many municipalities have their uh, provision of the, uh, the parking fees or the stand fees, they can take fees for the uh, fishery rights. For example, the uh, there are rivers, there are canals and where the ferry services are there, parking fees also there, fees on pay and use toilets, income from the cinema theatre. So, these are all accruable income which is there for, um, I mean they accrued um, uh, every month, every year. non accruable incomes are basically the, uh, the revenues which is coming from the other sources. Okay. So, that is all uh, with a brief in overview of the accounting. Um, situation and the accounting reform of the municipality. I just quickly summarize that uh, after 2000 when the government of India started bringing reform linked urban development through JNN RM program, that time uh, there was two set of um, reform, what was um, the first was the mandatory reform and the second was the optional reform. Out of the mandatory reform, the accounting reform was major. The objective of the accounting reform was that if the accounting reform accounting system is not a um, full proof and the modern system, uh, the accounting or the financial status of the municipality cannot be assessed. And the earlier system was basically cash based not the transaction based. Now, the double entry accounting system which is introduced now, it is basically transaction based and as a result it takes care of the account of the assets of the municipality liability of the, of the municipality, the expenditure and the income of the municipality and as a result it gives the true picture of the financial health of the municipality and that has been uh, being carried out in most of the municipalities. This I can tell you that this is one of the major reform and this will give a long standing effect and the benefit of the municipality and vis-a-vis -vis the service delivery of the urban uh, in the urban areas. 
next day we will discuss the value capture financing. Uh, um, in this week we have been discussing the finance aspect of the municipality. So, out of that the tax I mean the conventional sources, non-conventional conventional sources and today we have discussed the uh, accounting um, system. Next day we will discuss value capture financing, we will show that from various assets like land, property and other assets how municipality can earn uh, revenues for creating new infrastructure and better service. So, thank you very much for attending.